Hi, poets. Has anyone noticed anything since the last time we met? Uh, last time I talked about how poetry often begins with noticing. And um, I keep in my wallet like a little piece of paper, big piece of paper, but I folded it up small and I use it to make my notes on. And when I go out walking, I carry a pen. And if I notice something, sometimes I'll write it down on my piece of paper. This week, I noticed a couple of things. Uh, always when I was outside, I guess, um, you know, it was really windy. And uh, I noticed how the wind caught the leaves and they blew along in a line. And then as the wind died down, the leaves made a little spiral. And then they settled back down on the ground. And I also noticed that sound that the dry leaves made, you know, against the, against the street. And then I live in a neighborhood where sometimes you see turkeys. And I saw turkeys, I think yesterday, and they were doing this really strange, I call it a dance, but I don't know what it was. But one turkey would kind of hop up, not quite fly, but use its wings. And, and then when it came back down, the other turkeys around would just kind of run away. And then a different turkey would hop up and the other turkeys would scatter. And so I tried to write about that. Um, and sometimes these things you notice can spark a poem. Uh, when the wind is blowing, it makes me remember uh, windy days when I was a kid uh, and being inside because I grew up in a place where it was a desert. Lots of sand would blow. It was really uncomfortable to be outside in a sandstorm. And I didn't like that feeling of being stuck inside. And I'd be at the window looking out to see if the wind had died down. And there could be a poem in that. Um, so if you feel like carrying a piece of paper around with you and a pencil or a pen, just jot down things you notice, ideas that come to you. And when it's time to write a poem, a lot of times you can use that stuff. So... Today we're going to talk about two things. One is colors. Kind of the theme of our uh, poems today will be colors. Uh, but the other thing is what I call hand-mind coordination. And usually when I'm in a classroom with you, I'll, I'll spot someone who's kind of keeping their eye on me. And I'll... I like to use an eraser, but I'll throw them something. I'll just, you know, out of the blue, throw them a pen, say. And what always has happened is the person sees the pen coming and they reach out their hands and they catch it. And that's hand-eye coordination. You know, if you have to really think object coming must move hands, catch object, but it would be too late. You want to just do it automatically. And in writing, it can be really helpful if you have an automatic thinking. Because a lot of times we get really critical um, and we don't write even when we think. Um, the very first time I taught poetry in a class, it was with first graders. And they had to write a poem or I asked them to write a poem that started with, I wish. And they could finish the line any way they wanted. Uh, but one person didn't like the way the eye looked when she wrote it on the page. And so she turned her pencil over and tried to erase it. And then it smudged and she didn't like the smudge. So she tried to erase it more and then the paper tore. And by the time she got a chance to write the poem, you know, the time was up. And I always say, don't worry about how your eye looks. Don't worry if you don't know how to spell a word. Just think it, write it. And that's what we're going to work on today. Uh, 
hand-mind coordination. Um, and I think some poets practice hand-mind coordination. They just write the first thing that comes into their mind. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't make for a great poem, but sometimes it makes for something really interesting. And it's about the process of figuring out what's in your mind. So this is this comes from a poem that was written in Spanish. And I feel like the poet was just listening to the sound of the words in his mind, and he wrote them down. And whether they made sense or not was not the point. It was capturing, you know, this rhythm. Um, I'll, I'm not going to read the whole poem, but I'll read a stanza or two. And I want you to hear the sound of the words in Spanish, the original language, because uh, you'll get that sense of the rhythm. It's called in Spanish, Romance sonámbulo, and I'll read it in English in a second. Romance sonámbulo, verde que te quiero verde, verde viento, verdes ramas, el barco sobre el mar y el caballo en la montaña. Con la sombra en la cintura, ella sueña en su baranda, verde carne, pelo verde, con ojos de fría plata. Verde que te quiero verde, Bajo la luna gitana, las cosas la están mirando, y ella no puede mirarlas. So in English, it's called Sleepwalker's Song. Green, I love you green, green breeze, green branches, the boat on the sea and the horse in the mountains, cut in half by shadow. She dreams on her veranda, green flesh, green hair, with eyes of frozen silver. Green, I love you green, under the gypsy moon, she is being seen by things she cannot see. Um, Federico Garcia Lorca is the poet. So what I, I hope you get from that poem is that if you think it, you can write it. You know, if you hear it in your mind, write it down on the page. And don't worry about whether it makes sense. You know, you don't have to show everybody everything you write. If you're not happy with it, if you don't want to show it, just write it. And then, you know, figure out later what you want to do with it. And often people revise and they change. But catching that first impulse whatever occurs to you. Uh, that's something that can make writing poetry a lot more fun. So now I'm going to ask you to do that. I'm going to give you the beginning of six lines. And I want you to write down the beginning and then finish the line with the first thing that comes to your mind. And usually when I do this in the classroom, uh, I pause for a full minute. I'm not going to pause so long, but you can just stop the video, write down the rest of the line, and then continue the video for the next line. And as you'll see, it's about colors. And as I hope you'll also see, there is no such thing as a wrong answer for these lines. Um, any one thought can be as good as the next. So, first line. Blue smells like blue smells like what does it smell like? Make it up. First thing that comes to your mind. If you can write a bunch of words, that's great. If it blue smells like dust, I don't know. Anything you think of is okay. Okay. Green tastes like. Green tastes like. How does green taste? I don't know. You don't know? You just decide. Whatever comes to mind. Red sounds like. Red 
sounds like. How does red sound? Okay, next line. Black feels like. Black feels like. Just fill in the blank. First thing that comes to mind. Fifth line. Purple is. Purple is. You decide. Last line. Colors, when I think of them, colors, when I think of them. So I hope you really stopped the video and wrote down the first thing that came to mind for each line. You know, once you've heard the prompts once, it's harder to have that fresh idea. Um, whether you go long with your lines or short or some are long, some are short, you know, you have a poem. Now. So I want to read a few more poems that have to do with colors. And then I'm going to invite you to write a whole fresh poem using a color or colors. The first poem is called Pink. And I really like this poem because, you know, people have a lot of associations with pink and this poem has a whole different, fresh set of associations. Pink. The night has come. Pink's job is done. She was the dawn and the pink sun. But now blue's time has come. He'll be the moon. He'll be the sky. Pink sits and waits for sunrise. Then she'll be the sun again. She'll be the sky. But sunrise won't last long. When yellow comes and spreads her color to the sun, pink sits and waits. Pink sits and waits. And that poem does something that you see fairly often in poems where the last line gets repeated. And that, that gives the poem a sense of finishing. Um, let me read a few poems that other students from uh, Ms. Goyen's class wrote uh, after this lesson. I'll just maybe give you some ideas of where you can go with your poem. So for your poem, I'm going to ask you to write a poem with a color or colors in the poem. And you can treat the colors kind of like a person, the way pink does, or you can do whatever you want. So colors. This is blue smells like fresh blueberries. Green tastes like sour green apples. Red sounds like birds chirping. Black feels like pizza dough. Purple is a garden full of violets. Colors, when I think of them, are full of rainbows. Here's another, also called colors. I like colors. All colors are awesome in their own way. Blue makes me look up at the sky and down at the ocean. Green is like grass everywhere. Red is all the stop signs. Orange is just orange. You can't go wrong with that. Purple just catches my attention. Yellow makes the room shine brighter. I think colors are awesome in their own way. And here are a couple more. These go a little farther from that initial prompt. This poem, these are also by fifth graders. Uh, from Ms. Goyen's class. Think of blue. When you think of blue, what do you think? Ocean? Not I. I think of the rain of fire and all the dinosaur fish. Who are we to take them away? When you think of blue, what do you think? Sky? Not I. 
I think of the rocks with hands and the clarinets and cornets that won't play. Why? Now think of blue like nobody has before. And here's a last poem about green. Green is a calming color that moves in waves but flows in streams. Green can be the sea, but it can also be sea glass. Green can be candlelight and the wax flowing down the candle. Green. A tadpole breaks free and swims up from the bottom of a shallow green pond but its shadow stays behind, chained to the ground forever, like green. So usually I, I tell people in the class that, you know, if they get stuck, I'll come by their desk and just say a word and they can use that word to write the next line in their poem. Uh, we're not going to be able to do that, but, um, if you do get stuck, sometimes you can open up a book, put your finger down, and whatever that word is that your finger goes down on, that can give you an idea for your next line. So as I said, poems don't have to make perfect sense. They can follow a logic that is just your own, or sometimes it's a logic you're not even aware of. It's just the way the thoughts come to you. So in this poem, Try to put some colors in there and see what ideas those colors uh, suggest to you. And if there's something you notice that involves color, you can use that. Um, I haven't seen your first set of poems about noticing yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them and finding out what you're noticing, what you're writing about. Uh, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.